Welcome back guys, finally we do have the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1 running on my Pixel 9 Pro XL connected via a USB-C HDMI dock to my monitor. I'm using currently the Android 16 desktop mode and the Linux Virtual Machine VM on which I'm running Debian 12 with XFCE4. And finally guys, we do have Virgil, which is not bad. What is Virgil? How does it run? I'm gonna show you, but first things first, I'm gonna show you some gameplay with the Super Tux because this wasn't really working before. So, what is the big news here, guys? We finally have Virgil, which is really a technology to translate my host, in this case the phone, GPU and GFX capability and virtualize it into OpenGL. So it's not ideal, right? But I think it's doing a good job. And okay, just to give you the full story, what I'm using right now is Virgil. It's Virtual OpenGL. It is a software-based technology enabling finally hardware acceleration for 3D rendering within a VM. Because right now, guys, my phone is connected and believe it or not, but I am indeed running here a VM. How can we tell? Well, uh, I can show you. Yeah, this is my Pixel phone and this is the brand new desktop environment from which I've started my terminal. So the Linux terminal comes with Debian and on top of this, I'm running XFCE. So this is it here, guys. This is the XFCE version 4.18. This is the Debian, Debian Linux 12 bookworm. I was also able to upgrade this to 13. It wasn't running so nice. And what is very, very important it right now we are still using only four gigabytes of memory but finally in this terminal right now what Google did they enabled the display function because I was only able previously to connect to my phone using a VNC client but right now everything is directly running on the phone and before I show you around and I show you what I have this is kind of my desktop environment which is running pretty pretty okay all right, it's not so fine, it's not so good, but it's pretty workable, guys. And before we get to this, I just wanna show you some of the basic, because I do believe that it's important. Uh, one other way for us to confirm what we are running is using GLX info from SUTils, which is gonna show us that we're using the Virgil as an OpenGL renderer, and this is the 2.1 Mesa. And also, guys, I've installed GL Mark II, which is a benchmark, all right? So I'm gonna run this for you so that you're able to check. Yeah, okay, like I told you guys, it's not perfect, but I do believe this is a very, very good start. So here is the benchmark running here on the right on my screen, and here on the left, you can see the FPS. Now, don't get me wrong, guys, I already pre-run this, and I got a score of GL Mark II 92, which according to what I checked in Google uh, equals to a very low powerful GPU or a very outdated GPU but it's very good to see that finally we can now run games and I'm going to show you some games and forget about the games but with uh, the Virgil all right OpenGL it's better for everything. You can now use this really as a full-blown desktop. You can edit documents with LibreOffice. You can edit Excel files and you can browse the internet. You can even watch YouTube videos and some of the other big news is yes, finally, also the audio works. Right now, I have connected my phone as I have shown you directly to a USB-C dock on which I have a dongle and I'm using a keyboard. This is this keyboard, a wireless keyboard and also a wireless mouse and it goes directly to my monitor via HDMI and I have also sound which was missing before and you can see sometimes it really hit some nice FPS although the overall score was a rather low score I do believe this is a huge progress because having some kind of some kind of graphical acceleration can help you not only of course games you want to play some games but it can help you to get a better smoother experience for let's say everyday use things like watching YouTube videos or working on your documents or just browsing. Again, this is running here under the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1, the Linux terminal, which runs on Debian 12. Of course, I can show some other things. Um, yes, I mean, the setup itself is a whole other story. It wasn't so smooth. I had to do some things to enable Virgil that is a bit straightforward, but I had some problems also with my rights and all the users and stuff like this. I was able at the end to kind of resolve this. So now I have a full-blown OS and I can do a lot of things and I'm going to show you by the way this thing here is a real desktop operating system that is running under my Linux virtual machine and everything is running on my pixel phone which I believe is 
is very very good and believe it or not guys I can share I can even start the camera all right and yeah all right you can see even the camera is gonna work so uh, it is really really powerful I close it all for you I want to show you how I started from the beginning so I'm going to open the terminal all right if you want to set this up this is rather very straightforward you need to go inside the developers ocean and just enable the experimental desktop support but this is what we already know from Samsung Deck. So you're really able to run things directly on your phone. Okay, see, again, sometimes it's not so sweet, but okay, I'm not gonna give up. In this video, I wanna show you how I kind of turned my Pixel phone into a full-blown desktop operating system. Okay, so now I'm inside the terminal, guys. The new thing here in Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1 is the fact that they brought back the display function, all right? Which means that when I click here, Provided that, of course, you have some kind of a graphical manager like uh, what I'm using right now or can install uh, anything else like uh, you know, um, KD or whatever you want. So now I'm able to just log on to my virtual machine and I'm going to do this directly here uh, with you on screen. All right. So user droid, password droid. I really like the way this works. When I go here, there's this sweet and nice animation. You see like a rotating animation. Boom. I can go and maximize it. And this now is going to be my desktop OS. Okay. So if I go about, you're going to see this is running Debian Linux. Okay. Debian 12 and the graphical manager is XFCE version. I hope that I'm going to get sound right now because sometimes when I just restart, yeah, there's still some issues that I'm losing the sound. All right, so I'm not even sure if uh, in this session right now I'm going to still get sound, but okay, we can check with you together. All right, how can we check this? Just opening something like this. By the way, the GL Mark score I got was uh, 92, and I, like I told you guys, this isn't perfect. According to Google itself, this is extremely, extremely low. All right, now I'm not sure if the sound is working. How do we know when I click on the audio? Ah, now the sound is gone. Okay, so how can I fix this? You know, I can go back and restart my phone. If you want to do this, of course, this is going to work. But let me show you how YouTube works. And again, guys, now the sound is off, but I showed you uh, the sound war before. So you can open YouTube. All right, let's just go and search for some of my videos. Okay, I'm going to open here my channel. And with Virgil, right, there are some things uh, that I think are very, very positive because now everything due to this works faster and smoother. Now, okay, don't get me started about resolution. Yeah, can I go and crank 4K? I don't want to, but let's try to do something else. Can I just use even FHD? Maybe it's going to be problematic. Maybe not. No, I think it works. So you can see with uh, some kind of graphical acceleration, uh, everyday activities are going to be fine. See, Naptic Package Manager is going to work. So from here, let's say if I go to Games and Amusement, Right, I can always go and download a game. So let's just do something with you directly. 3D Tron like speed high game. Okay, can I get a screenshot? You just click here and you know it's going to get downloaded provided that anything works. Okay, this looks fine. So I'm just try to close this for you. Again, I wanted to do this hands-on video so that you can see how this works. I can just click here uh, now with the right mouse button. Uh, and okay, here just select mark for installation. Then I'm gonna hit mark. Uh, and then guys I'm going to go and hit apply which means that now you know when I hit apply hopefully this thing is going to get downloaded which means also that you know you're gonna have network connectivity also via your phone and again it's not flawless right but I was able to install some of the games I'm gonna show you. oh yeah maybe it's installed let's see can I start it okay sadly now I'm not going to have any sound but at least it runs Okay, and now I can go and even click immersive, which is going to get me like the full screen, right? This is, this is just good, guys. And when I click back, it's just going to get minimized. And I want to show you how this works. So this is my Pixel 9 Pro XL running the Android 16 QPR2 Beta 1. This thing here is the USB-C to HDMI with a USB-C mini and a normal one. Okay, so what I can do, guys, I will just hook it up. Now, what I found out is, guys, the moment I do so, if I have the dongle for my keyboard is not going to work. So now I just go and I select the HDMI input on my monitor and now hopefully I'm going to get the Pixel desktop environment, which is it. So now what I can do, I'm going to put the phone aside and the second step is for me to insert the USB dongle. If I do this with the USB dongle here, it's not going to work for a reason. 
Okay, so now we are here. And now guys, how do I know that my phone is connected? Uh, first you see that we have an icon there. And now guys, if I go inside the connected devices, there's gonna be external display. And I know this is my Asus uh, CG32 inches U. You can modify the display size, also the rotation and the display resolution that I set to this. There are some others advanced. I didn't really try them. You can also go and select minor built-in display, which is just going to replicate what you see on the phone screen directly here on the monitor which is something I don't want because I want to use really like the full-blown desktop mode. From here guys, you can start a lot of things. I think this is clear, so I'm going to restart my terminal. And now I'm back on my VM and I'm going to show you some Doom activities. And again guys, not that this is running bad, but with my Bluetooth keyboard, I am experiencing, you know, some like lags. I really hope that this can be fixed if I use like a wired keyboard. It's probably too much, you know, for um, the configuration right now, but you can see this is pretty playable. All right, so I can just walk around. I can try to strafe also without, so this is really how strafing works. So let me just walk you around. We have here the terminal emulator. We have the file manager. This is the standard one. And I just wanna walk you around to, for you to see like really how well this works just because we have some kind of, you know, support for graphical acceleration. This is the web browser, the one that I showed you before. Uh, pretty okay for like, everyday activities, also for YouTube, as you've seen, it works quite nice. I've also installed Chromium when I go to internet and I click Chromium, but Chromium doesn't really work so well, so I'm just using now the Firefox version. Let's just try to authenticate, okay, and here, Chromium hopefully it's going to start. You can see there are some artifacts. It's still not perfect like I told you. Everything here is still better. All right, we have some accessories. Okay, let's go and show you the task manager, guys. I think this is cool. I mean, just imagine this thing here runs really <laughs> on 4G RAM. In the previous version of the terminal, I was able to resize the internal space or partition. Right now, I don't see this option anymore, but I hope that Google are gonna bring this back. Okay, so let's go inside the settings. This is the settings manager. I also tried to change my resolution from display, but if I choose anything else besides 1280 by 720, which is HD, yeah, this doesn't really end up well, so uh, probably better luck with some of the other updates. Here we have the appearance, you know, from dark like this or from high contrast. Let me show you how the installation works via Synaptic. I just tried to install GIMP. Let's see if I was uh, successful at that. And now I'm able to run GIMP. So GIMP is the GNU image manipulation program, which is kind of like a tool like Photoshop that can help you edit your photos. And again, with Virgil, I do believe this is now almost useful. Let's now download a sample raw file. This is in rough format. All right, this is interesting. I'm not even sure if GIMP is gonna be able to open this without, of course, some of the plugins um, installed. To be able to open raw files, I need to install some kind of uh, raw loader like raw therapy. So I've applied this one. I'm gonna hit here, apply. And you can see right now, by the way, I'm using even my 5G connection. So it isn't the craziest speed, but you can see this thing really works like a charm. And you can just even get more details as the package has been downloaded and then unpacked and installed. So right now with you on video, I'm doing this only to show you that this thing is, is okay. If you wanna use this as a second kind of like desktop operating system, why not, it's gonna work. Welcome to the Roll Therapy Game Plugin. All right, so I was able to open the picture, all right. And this is, I think, a rather huge file, a lot that was like 20, 30 megabytes. Okay, I can zoom it in like that. Uh, and, and imagine guys, all of this happens you know, inside the virtual machine, okay, that is running on my pixel. And you can see it ain't that bad. Let's play with the shadows and the highlights. I'm going to switch this on and I'm gonna try to correct some of the highlights. Does it really work? All right, I think it does, by the way. I'm also gonna pump up the shadows a bit. Yeah, okay, so if I go here to the shadow part, you can see, right? And again, it's sometimes it's a bit laggy. I just think because of the Bluetooth mouse that I'm using, but you can see it's a, yeah, rather, I think standard raw file in terms of size. And this is how it works. So I do believe that this is, it's absolutely bearable. I mean, just for the bare minimum use, probably even a bit more, right? So this is 33 megabytes. Again, all of this is running under the virtual machine that is running directly on my Pixel phone. And this is the browser, and now I can close the browser. 
I can move the screen around and it's all 3D. And again, don't expect really anything, let's say, mind blowing, guys. Dreamchase is also using, I do believe, OpenGL. So again, you can use this for like standard things. Uh, probably not, you know, if you daily drive this, but just imagine, you know, you have everything in your pocket, everything is on your phone. You just connect your phone using USB C to HDMI to a monitor, and then you have boom, a full blown desktop system. And everything is really in your pocket. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is a perfect solution, right? Apparently, it still needs more work. Uh, I think that Google should bring back the option for us to resize the data that this thing can use because right now I think it's like 10G everything. So, of course, I'm limited. I cannot even go install more stuff. Also, it's using fairly limited amount of RAM only 4G. There are some ways for you to increase the ZRAM if you want to do so. I think that has been showed on Android Auto already. Someone discovered it and I tested it in my previous videos. Last but not least, let me try to show some more benchmarks. I have also installed the Heart Info 2. All right, let's see if this is gonna run. Okay, so you can see it's Debian Linux 12.11. <laughs> All right, the Pixel processor and only guys, only four gigabytes of memory the red hat virtue this is the gpu you can see it's virgil all right and okay this is the summary let's click here again okay you can see the resolution you can see the display adapter and everything that is connected okay that's the operating system okay security kernel modules okay then let's go to memory usage all right display okay x11 let's try streaming so i have here uh, eon i'm gonna try to play something <laughs> yeah, as you can see, you can also play TV. That ain't that bad, guys. And imagine everything really happens here, you know, on the background of the pixel. I want to see some temps after doing all this, like standard basic desktop usage. I'm going to maximize this. All right, so 45 Celsius. You can see that it is, I think, rather okay. So, and imagine, guys, this is uh, using the old Tensor G4. So I really hope that with Tensor G5, this is only going to get better. But then again, really, this new Linux terminal inside Android 16 is so good, right? And the whole desktop mode, I, I do believe, is, is good. Now, it's, I think, still lacking beyond a bit what we have from DeX. I'm not able to put things directly uh, on my, uh, let's say, desktop but you can see the camera works so this is me just recording this video all right so camera works everything pretty much integrated but it's still a bit buggy you can see i'm not even able to kind of minimize some of the things uh but then again yeah this is still all better guys let me know what you think down below in the comments and i think even more important let me know if you think of this new updated linux terminal with finally some kind of graphical hardware acceleration is a good idea or a bad idea and if you have enjoyed this video you know what to do guys thank you so much for watching vst over and bye